Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we're continuing our little theme of Divi menu hover effects here. And we got one for you today. When we hover over our little links up here, they're gonna have a little blue background and the link's gonna change to white. And when we take our mouse off, it's gonna go back to how it was. That's a nice little eye catching effect. You see it around quite often. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of custom CSS for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any CSS I write, I'll put down below the video and you're welcome to use it and manipulate it how you want. So let's get started. First thing I got to do is go to my theme customizer. For anybody that doesn't know how to get to the customizer, go to your dashboard, go down to appearance and customize. That will bring you to this page right here. And we're working in the additional CSS just at the bottom right here. So I'm going to delete the code that I've written for this. I'll leave the title there. Let's just publish that. And we'll refresh the page. Everything should go back to normal. You shouldn't see any change there. There we go, and we just got the regular Divi menu now. So again, I'm just going to open my additional CSS right there. Okay, I'm going to right click and inspect one of these links here. I'm using Google Chrome today with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, then Google Chrome is a free download. And we've been working on the links themselves. As you can see, when I hover over the link there, it highlights it in the blue. And the, gr the green below is just spacing right there. But I actually want to work on the list item itself just above it that contains the link right there today. So I'm going to click on the LI class right there. And as you can see over here, we've got top menu list item. Now you may notice when we hover over it that it stretches to the bottom of the header there. So if I was to give it a colored background now, let's just do this so you can see what's going on. I'm going to just put in background colon blue as you can see that's got a blue background but it's stretching all the way to the bottom of the header we don't want that today and the great thing with about the inspector right here is you can do what you want with the CSS it's non-destructive so once you hit the refresh button up here it'll return to however it was before you started writing here so you can't break anything with it so it's great for experimenting and to make it permanent we need to copy any new code that we've written here and paste it into our additional CSS over here and that will make it permanent. Okay, so I don't want it that big. So the first thing I want to do is give it a fixed height. So let's say height. I'll say 30 pics. But I don't think that's going to work purely because of the size of the text there. So I'm going to leave that there, but let's give it some padding all around so that that text is in the middle. So I'm going to say padding 10 pixels. And that, that uh, writing is just low. It's a little low. It's not central in there. So we can fix that by just giving it a little more height here. And the great thing about the Chrome Inspector here is if you highlight a number over here, you can roll up and down with your mouse wheel and increment up or down. I'm just going to give it a couple more until that's right in the center there. Perfect. Home page. So 33 is the magic number on that. All right. Well, our head has actually shrunk because of this and our logo is up there. So what I need to do is because we've given it 10 pixels on top here it's pushed it down by 10 so I need to pull it up by 10 by using a bit of negative margin so I'm going to say margin top dash top colon negative 10 pixels and that's popped it back up to where it was but our logo is still offset there I don't know if you can see this little line here but it's was down here we need to push it back down here to get our logo central again we can do that by adding some margin on the bottom of these list items right here. So let's add some margin on the bottom. And it's probably going to be 33 picks because that's the height we gave them. So let's say margin, bottom, colon, 
We'll try 33 picks. See what happens. Yeah, that's actually pushed it down a little bit too far. I don't know if you saw that. This jumped down a little bit. So again, if I highlight this and roll back with my mouse to maybe 30 pixels, you can see it moves slightly. And if I take it down to 25, that line appears there, if you can see it in the video. So I need to push that line down so it's right just on the bottom, but not making it grow any. So 30 pixels seems to work perfectly. Great. So those are central. Our logo is central. Great. So let's give this a little round corner. To do that, we'll use border radius. And let's say give it 10 picks to sort of make it kind of pill shaped. You can give it a much higher value if you want. The higher the value, the more the corner you've got on there. So again, if I select this and roll my mouse up, the more I put it on there, the more round it's going to get until you've got pill shape right there. But I think 10s are going to work for me for this today. So let's take it back down to 10. And you may notice we've got no space. It's hard to see with that dark writing on there, but we'll fix that in a little while. We've got no space on the end of this last list item here or the last child it's called and we can fix that in a moment but let's take what we've written here and make it permanent so I'm going to go from the hashtag from the CSS ID of top menu list item there all the way down to the closing curly bracket there I'm going to copy it control C or right click and copy however you want to do it and I'm going to pop it under our little title up here and again, as usual, this CSS will be down below the video. So you don't have to copy it in real time. You're welcome to copy it, use it, paste it in your site, do what you want with it. Okay, and we can get rid of anything that we didn't write. We didn't write the display, font size, or padding. So we can remove that. So it's kind of doing what we want, but we don't want to see these all the time. I only really want to see them when I hover over it. So I'm going to copy CSS ID over here all the way to that first opening bracket. I'm going to drop down. And when we paste it, we'll have to put a closing bracket. Whenever you've got an opening curly bracket, you've got to make sure you've got a closing curly bracket. So I'm going to pop that in there, put my closing curly bracket in there, drop down a line. And inside, I'm going to steal that background color I'm going to cut it out of there. Control X to cut. I'll delete that line there. I'm going to paste it in here. And just after the eye of the list item there, with no gap after the eye, I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. No gap after the colon. Okay. Now I'm going to publish this and let's refresh and see what we've got. Get back into our additional CSS. Now everything looks pretty much the same, but now when I hover over, we've got that blue color. Great. Couple of things. I want to turn our link to white there so we can actually see it on our blue background. And that blue is okay for reference, but it's not the blue I want. I want it perhaps the same color as my logo. So let's get it the right color first. I've got a little free Chrome extension right here, a color picker. I'm just going to grab this color, copy the hex code. I'm going to change that from blue to this hex code because it's hex code it needs a hashtag in front of it. And then the code. There we go. Now we may have to refresh before we can see that. Yep, that's fine. I'll leave it in there at the moment. That's still the old blue, but when we refresh next time, it'll come up with this. Okay, and the other thing I want is I want these links, homepage about us, when we hover over, to be white so we can actually see them on this background. So let's copy the top menu list item and the hover. In fact, let's copy the whole thing. And I'll drop down one more. I want to affect the link this time. If we look at this, I'm sure you, some of you may know this. If you inspect the link, we're on the A. This is actually 
top menu A. So you could either do that or you could do top menu list item A. I've already got list item in there. So all I'm going to do is just after the I of list item, put a gap in, a space, and then an A for the anchor tag. And instead of background, I want to say color. I want to make it white. Hex for white is hashtag FFF. It's actually six Fs, but with CSS3, you just if it's six all the same, you just need to put three of them in there. Now again, I'm not sure if this will work. Yeah, it's actually worked, but it's kind of pale white. I wanted a bright white. And now you can see the lack of gap on that one. We'll fix that in a minute. So we need to overwrite the styles here. So I'm going to tell it opacity or see throughness wants to be fully visible, which is one. Zero is completely invisible and you increment up 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and get whatever transparency you want. Because we're overriding a style, I need to use important. Don't like to use it, but sometimes you have to, to force things. So it's exclamation mark, important semicolon. Now when we hover over, that's a nice white looking link there. That's that's what I want. All right, well, we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got no gap on the end there. So let's fix this. I'm going to right click and inspect this. And let's bring this up a little bit so we can see. And let's go to the, make sure we're on the last list item here in the line because we're on the last list item in the line and we'll roll up and it's top menu list item last child so I need to make sure it's got some padding on the right hand side of 10 picks let's have a look now there, that seems to work. Again, we may need to force this. Let's just copy what we've got here. And we'll paste it below our last entry. Just drop down a couple. We'll paste it in there. Get rid of that top one. Let's publish and just refresh. Make sure all these things are going to work for us. I'll close out the inspector and refresh the page. Yep, we've got our gap there. We've got our little hover effect and the correct color there. The only thing I'd like to do is just slightly slow it down a bit. So it's a little more subtle and sort of fades in a bit more gently. So let's do a slow transition duration. And this is personal preference. Obviously, you might like it just like that. So we're going to put this in the list item right here. Not the hover state, the actual regular state. So we're going to do transition duration. Dash duration. And I'm going to give it quite a lot. I'm going to give it 1.5 seconds. You can give it 0.2 seconds. 0.8 seconds or 2.5 seconds just put in whatever timing you want but I think that's going to work for me and as you can see one fades out while the other's fading in I quite like that effect so we if we've done everything correctly this should work for us so let's publish our changes and don't forget I'll mention it again this will be below the video for anybody who needs to just copy and paste it and change the colors and sizes to what you need and let's look here we shouldn't see much change actually because it's pretty much the same code as I wrote before and there we go we've got our little hover effect going there and that's a nice little eye-catching addition as I mentioned before you see this quite a lot on sites and it's pretty easy to do so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. 
have a great day.